and just like kind of changing my mentality that instead of oh there's no way i'm gonna final or um there's too many fast people at this meet Hmm. um or just kind of like the degrading mindset like that just telling yourself that you can't and change to i will do this like this Hmm. is something i'm going to do at this meet Hmm. that's awesome welcome to the swim strong dry land podcast where we aim to highlight inspiring people doing amazing things in the Swim Strong family and in the greater swim community. All right, I'm here with KK LeBlanc from the Swim Strong Island small group team, and I'm excited for you guys to get to hear her story. She's had a massive year uh, this year that is absolutely incredible. But before we get to that, KK, we got to do our rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see what you got. First off, what would be your walkout song? My walkout song? <laughs> Probably Nightcrawler by Travis Scott right now. <laughs> oh, Travis Scott. How about your favorite food before a swim meet? Probably, well, every every single time that I have a swim meet, especially in the mornings, I always have oatmeal. Oh, that's good. We just put out an oatmeal post too. Good. <laughs> How about your superpower of choice, if you could have any superpower? Probably invisibility. How about if you were not swimming, what sport would you be doing? Probably golf, because that's what I was doing before this, and I wasn't, like, terrible at it. So, I yeah, probably golf. That's awesome. All right. How about um, favorite candy bar? Um... Candy bar? Uh, any candy, any candy. Any candy, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Yeah, yeah, good choice. Yes. And favorite cartoon character? Tom from Tom and Jerry. And last but not least, what's your favorite thing about Swim Strong Dryland? All the hip mobility stuff that we do and just like, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, all the hip mobility stuff that we do and like <laughs> focusing on just like stretching and just different like little things like that. That's awesome. See, very few people say that when they talk about, uh, there's obviously a lot of great things that people like to say, but the hip mobility, I like that you're taking time to do that, gets you that, to that extra level. It makes a difference. All those little things aren't so little. So, Resistance bands are a must have for dry land. Elite athlete power band kits are designed to give you a cost-effective way to improve performance and reduce the risk of injury. These high-quality kits last longer and are versatile enough to provide total body workouts anywhere, anytime. The levels of resistance are ideal for progressing youth athletes without weight increases that are too large. Go to the link provided on the SwimStrong Dryland website, click on the training tab, and search equipment suggestion list and get your elite athlete resistance bands today. Chin all high school and club swimmers and divers. Are you ready to take your talents to the next level and dive into the collegiate scene? Look no further than ACC Recruiting, your premier destination for college swimming and diving recruitment education. At ACC Recruiting, we specialize in connecting student athletes with the perfect collegiate programs that match their skills and academic aspirations. Our experienced team will guide you through the recruitment process, providing personalized support every stroke of the way. Don't let your dreams sink. Visit ACC Recruiting today and make a splash in your future. Dive into success with ACC Recruiting, where champions are born. Visit our website now or call us at 314 518 8844. That's 314-518-8844. ACC Recruiting, your gateway to collegiate swimming and diving excellence. Anyway, you did awesome with the rapid fire questions, KK. Um, I'm excited for everybody to get to hear your story because uh, it's been inspiring to me to witness your journey, specifically this year, um, since we've been working together since the start of the season. And um, it's been really cool. But I want everybody to hear how you got started in this sport in the first place. What was the beginnings of swimming for KK? How did you get involved in the sport in the first place? So I originally, I like had just moved here from um, my old town. And so my best friend across the street, one day she was just like, Oh, like I had never even thought of doing summer swimming like at all. And so um, one day she was like, Hey, like I do summer league or whatever, like you should come and join me one summer. And so I was like, okay, I was probably like, 
I think I was about nine at the time, 10, 10 years old. And so I joined it with her for a summer and I was not, <laughs> I was not very good at it at all, but, um, I did it and I was like, okay, like I kind of like it, but I'm just going to keep it like a summer thing. And then I was going into mm-hmm. fourth grade at the time. And so that's when I met, um, one of my still, my oldest friend now, Lauren Tillman. Um, and she's a very like persuasive person and so <laughs> when she found out I did swimming, um, she was like, oh my gosh, I'm on this club team, like sharks or whatever. Um, you should come and join like my club team. Like, come on, we can like be friends. Like I can introduce you to everyone. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm just going to join this club team with my friend. And so I joined it and <laughs> I was actually put in one of the lower groups than um, what all my friends were in because I was so terrible. <laughs> so... <laughs> There was that, but I mean, I joined it and I kind of like stuck, like kind of, it just stuck. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah, that was really, that's really just how I got into swimming, just like through friends. So, yeah. What would, first of all, I love hearing stories like that because a lot of times people will just see the things that you're doing now and be like, wow, KK is wicked talented and so fast, which you are, but it's not like it was just born talent, not like you have put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of skill work, a lot of strength work, a lot of my all kinds of different things. Um, and so it's really fun to hear how people get started in the first place. And it's almost always that somebody had a friend um, in the sport or they're just learning for to swim for survival, swim lessons so that um, they can know how to survive in water. Um, but it's usually with swim team, it's a friend or something like that uh, that gets you started and just for the you just enjoy being in the water. Um, I think that's cool. When you said <laughs> the story of being in the age group below, cause you were, um, not very good at the time. Uh, was there any, can you remember anything about that time? Can you remember like what specifically you weren't, was it like everything about it? Just your technique was rough. You didn't know how to kick, like just didn't have the strokes <laughs> down. What, 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 give us a picture of like young KK. <laughs> I think, Oh, young KK. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so definitely, um, I definitely say technique at the least. I had, I I mean, I've always been real tall and lanky. I'm six foot for people that don't know. Mm-hmm. And so um, six foot, and I've been like six foot since like around freshman year. And so um, I've always kind of been super lanky. And so I had terrible technique. I mean, it was just like me swinging my arms around and like my kick <laughs> was just like, so like it kind of looked like a dying like fish in the water and so um that was that was definitely one of the things that was just not good and then also just like because my technique was so terrible I was not very good at all (laughs) so Mm -hmm. yeah there was just that too um but I so what was what was the so you had like um but you this is curious to me. You like, weren't that good. And you can remember all specifically the things that were challenging for you. Um, but what was your mindset during that time? Like, did you care at all? Or were you just like, I want to be better. I want to get to the next age group to be with my friends. Or you were just like, I'm swimming. I'm having fun. What was your mind? Can you remember back that far what you were thinking about? I honestly think probably at the time I was thinking like, yes i'm like having like fun in the group because i remember i did i did make friends in that group and so um they were a lot of fun but also like i wanted to move up to the next group with all of my friends because i mean like it was a ton of kids from my grade that were in the group above me and then a bunch of like younger kids are like three years younger than me in that group <laughs> and so i was yeah. like i like you guys and i'll still stay friends with you but i kind of do want to move up to my other friends yeah so <laughs> There was definitely like a little determination there, but also it was definitely more of like the like fun summer league, like, oh, I love my friends mm-hmm. type of time. So, yeah. Yeah. And then how about like, what was the time in the sport where you felt like, oh, I'm, I'm, I might be pretty good at this thing. Like, this is a sport I could actually go pretty far with. Do you remember when that happened or um, what period of, of time in your career that was? Probably it kind of started around when I was like 12 and um when I had so I had my very first tags and I literally was brought on a singular relay and that was it and like I had no other races I time trialed and still didn't get it and so um I had my first tags then and then 
I think maybe either a year later or like six months later, I had made tags, I think, in like eight or nine different events like I had to like wow. choose which events I wanted to do because it was like I couldn't do all of them and so wow um like around and not really a whole lot of other people on our team like had done that and so I was kind of mm -hmm. like starting to realize especially with my coach at the time his name was coach Lou I I love coach Lou and so um he was he was a very positive guy like my coach now and so mm -hmm. he was just like like you're doing so amazing right now and he definitely like helped like he helped make me realize like, oh, I could actually be like really good at the sport and I could like do something mm. with this. So that was probably like, that was probably the time that I realized that um, or that I started to realize that. And then it kind of became like more clear when I had, or when I turned 13 and made NCSA for the first time in the 50 free. And like, mm -hmm. there was definitely like some other things that came with that, but it was definitely more of like the realization like, okay like being like the only 13 year old on the team within csa um it was kind of just like okay this isn't necessarily normal so maybe i could like, <laughs> like be faster at the sport and like do good at this and just like focus like focus a lot more on swim than what i had before yeah yeah so you went from feeling like you were not super coordinated and couldn't get the technique to being the only one on the team as at a, still a young age i mean 13 is young um with a with a national level cut for ncsas and um and then you've continued to rise from there um you talked about how you really loved uh your coach lou and now your current coach can you talk a little about your experience with your club team now and what specifically you love about the coaching i would definitely say like my coach my coach now is coach gordy and so i i love coach gordy like <laughs> like so much he's he, him and also Coach Lou have definitely been my top two, like, favorite coaches of all time. And they're mm -hmm. both, it's so funny because they were at two completely different time periods because Gordy actually just came to our team about a year and a half ago right now, right before short course last year. And so um, mm -hmm. he, and I mean, Coach Lou, he left like a while ago. And so they have like never met each other, never talked to each other, but they're so similar and they're so similar mm -hmm. with their coaching that it's like, it's insane to me. And I mean, I've taken off like <laughs> with me, it's weird. Like I kind of like always like at a constant, but there's been two points in my life where I've kind of just like shot up, um, mm -hmm. just like really out of nowhere. And it's both been with both coaches. And so awesome. both of them definitely have like the same traits of just being very positive and like cheering mm -hmm. on their swimmers and not necessarily like babying their swimmers, maybe a little more blue than, <laughs> than Cordy, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> They, they don't like, they don't baby their swimmers, but they're still positive and there for them. Mm. And they're like, it's more of like an encouraging type of, um, type of like feel with them instead of more like, yeah. like someone like pointing at you and just like yelling at you all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I would definitely say that like over the years I have realized that I don't do very well when it's, it's like negative coaching on me. And so, yeah. um, I definitely say like just like the positive positivity from both of those coaches has definitely like helped improve me, which is um, also why I chose Ohio State, which we'll probably talk about in a little bit. But um, also why I chose Ohio State, too, because Bill Dorncott and like Coach Nacho and just all of them seemed like very nice people and very like yeah. encouraging and cheering on their summers. That's awesome. I mean, it just goes to show, too, like the what you're talking about too, what you said wasn't, oh, they're like gurus with technique and like know everything. You were like, no, they just are positive and care. Um, and I'm sure they're fantastic coaches too, but that's like secondary. And yeah, I think that's, that's always, true. it's like, that's, but that's like, um, that's how it should be. You know, like it doesn't, you could know everything in the world, but uh, nobody wants to swim for somebody who doesn't actually care about them or who isn't enjoyable to be around so yes. um yes. so that's awesome um and to be quite honest i never really understood why people were in coaching who are so negative <laughs> yeah. uh and don't yeah. seem to like love what they do but for you to have two coaches who you're like i've thoroughly enjoyed being with them and they've made a positive impact on my swimming career that's pretty amazing uh so shout out to them too but um 
And yeah, we can talk about Ohio State now since you brought it up. Um, the Ohio State is really uh, blessed to be able to get you, and I know you're blessed to go there too. Um, but but you really will be a huge asset to their team. And um, can you tell everybody why you chose it? Obviously, you mentioned the coaching and that they were just like fantastic people. What about Ohio State was like, yes, this is this is the one when you were doing all of your visits and searching and everything. I would definitely say like. Oh man, I don't I don't even know like where to start with Ohio State because it's just like people ask me this question all the time and I'm just like oh my gosh, like it's so much that I don't even know. But I'll start with like yes, like the coaches like I so the coach that I will most likely have what they've talked about is I'll have coach Nacho. He's kind of like the sprinting coach. And so mm -hmm. um I never personally talked to him like during recruit, recruiting. I talked to Katie Trey, she's one of the assistants. Um, and so she was very, she was very, like, she was super sweet, like, during, um, the whole recruiting process, and she was my, she was not my age, not my, not my age, but, um, <laughs> she was a lot younger, and so I got to relate to her a lot more on just all kinds of different things. I don't even know where to start with that, but, um, I talked to her, and she was just a very, like, sweet person and I could tell that she cared a lot about Ohio State and she had swam there too mm -hmm. and so I was just like okay like I'm kind of getting the best of both worlds like a coach and a swimmer that was for Ohio State um so I had her and then um I went on my trip yes I went on my trip to there and I met Nacho and Bill Dorncott and they were both I mean just genuine people like you could tell you could tell that they were just genuinely like good people and um mm -hmm. I got to talk to both of them they were both super funny and um like I said earlier is that they just they encourage cheering on their swimmers and they like you can if you go on the Ohio State Instagram there's pictures of Bill Norcott at the meets just like cheer like pictures of him just screaming at his swimmers like during the meet and not in like a bad way but just like yelling <laughs> for them like during races and so I mean mm -hmm. that was definitely one of the things that I did like about that because that was one of the um that was one of the main things that I was looking for at mm -hmm. or in colleges during that whole process was just yeah. is the team is the team good um or not good but team culture is a team culture good um do they blend well like i know there's gonna be some drama but not just like all drama and like all gossip just all the time and so um or just genuine genuine people not anything kind of fake like i didn't really sense yeah. anything fake from them and so that to me was just like good traits um yeah and then def or one of the other ones was the resources that they did or that they had um i learned a lot more when i went on the actual trip than i did over the recruiting process um hmm. about the college yeah. and so their resources were just i mean insane they what all do they have they have this like little pod thing that you can go in and it's like two inches of like uh water with like i guess a ton of salt in it and you go in there and you sleep and it's the weirdest thing. You go in there and you sleep and like an hour of that is equal to like four hours of sleep or something like that. It's just, oh, it's crazy. Wild so, stuff. Yes. And so it's just the amount of resources that they had too. I was just, it, it blew my mind. I was just, oh, oh my gosh. Like I've never been offered any of this before in my life. And it's insane. Like I love this. And so that's awesome. That was, yeah. That was another thing. And also just like the campus too. I mean, the campus was really good. Um, that's really not a whole lot about swimming, but um, yeah. No, really no, like all those things matter for sure. I mean, like you're, where you're going to live is really important because swimming isn't your whole life. You're a student athlete, right? So student more than athlete. And so where you're going to live and um, be a normal student is super yeah. important. So the fact that you love the campus, that you really love the team culture, which is huge for success because if you have a negative, like you were talking, alluding to like gossipy, toxic team culture you're never going to be successful in that environment or at least not as successful as you could be um when you're in a much more positive environment it's also a lot less fun to be a part of something like that and then the genuine nature of the coaches that's something too like definitely with the college recruiting process even as a coach um it was uh it's an exciting process but it was also a little bit um 
frustrating because some people are very different uh, when they talk to you when they want something versus when they don't. And um, that was pretty eye opening to me just as a coach. Um, and so seeing people who will treat you the same regardless of whether they get what they want or not, that's that's really important. Um, and I've always got that feel from the Ohio State coaches, too. I absolutely love their staff. And um, so and yeah, they definitely have some pretty awesome facilities. So anyway, that's fantastic um, and uh, really exciting uh, for the next steps for you. And they're and they I don't know if they realized how lucky they were too because of the amount that you still have in front of you in my opinion is ridiculous um I don't know like what your ceiling is and I don't know I don't want to find out I want to just keep going <laughs> and see but like uh don't put any limits on yourself because it's been w one of the wildest years I think um that uh that I've seen from a swim athlete and um just the the transfer. I mean, I if am I, am I remembering this correctly? This year, you've dropped like you are uh never had been under twenty two um twenty three and a fifty free, and you dropped like literally a full second from like twenty three six to twenty two six. Is that am I completely accurate on that, or am I slightly off? I can't remember the exact just, time. Just a little bit, just a little bit. But yes, I'd never been under twenty three. I had like a twenty three, I think oh nine or something like that. Okay. Like it was. Okay, but so I had, half a second. <laughs> yes, but I had stayed like in that same range since freshman year because I had gone like mm. a twenty three twenty freshman year and then like a twenty three oh nine sophomore year, um, and then just like kind of held that. Um, but yeah, at Winter Juniors, I broke twenty three that morning and then just I think dropped like point three that night too when I came back for finals. So it was. It was definitely a lot. <laughs> that meet, I had some <laughs> crazy races. I will say for sure. Yeah, and that's that's just the fifty. And then you look at your hundred and two hundred. I mean, I don't know. I I don't know the times off the top of my head, but they're <laughs> massive chunks of times for the hundred and two hundred. <laughs> that do you know? Do you know off the top of your head yes. what you've dropped down? <laughs> yes, I what do. What was so, it? Even? Um. So for the hundred free, I had um a forty nine. 86 that I'd swim at like that I swim at state the year before that um or I guess you want to say a couple months before that um I had swim a 49 86 at state and then went a 49 5 in prelims and barely made a final I mean honestly I was just happy about making a final because I never finaled at a national meet ever and so mm -hmm. I was going crazy with my coach I was just like oh my gosh, I made a final. And I just looked at him and I was like, <laughs> I get a medal even if I get eighth. <laughs> so I, was like, I was so happy about it. And so um, made a final um, and got there. And I dropped a little bit more at night. I thought I went a 49.33. I thought I was going to go a little faster, but I was like, but I still dropped. And so I was happy with that. And I still, um, I ended up getting sixth. But it was because one girl got DQ'd and the other threw the race because she had a race afterwards. <laughs> hey, but six is six. <laughs> that's what everyone tells me. And I'm just like, well, <laughs> so, yeah. But that was the good thing about that is that I made a final in my 100 free. So that was probably, like, my highlight of the whole meet. Um, was it was awesome. definitely that. And then, um, yes, the two free, too. Um, yeah, the 200 free, too. Um I had been a 150.3, something like that, I think, in the two free um, before that meet. And so, honestly, that morning, I wasn't really looking to final. I was kind of just like, oh, uh, I just want to break, like, 150 or whatever. Like, yes, finaling would be nice, but okay. And so, I went, I think, a 149 that morning and made B final. Yes, I made mm -hmm. B final um, in that race. And then later that night, um, I swam a 147. And so, which was, it was, it, I mean, it was nuts for me because I, I had never been under 150 either. And so um, I kind of knew I had it in me, but I didn't know I had a 147 in me. I was like, oh, okay, like 148 maybe, but okay, 147. <laughs> and so honestly, I feel like it was, um, I feel like I definitely, or not definitely with that. I feel like I went that also help uh thanks to liberty clark who is right next to me she's one of my friends and she's actually um she's going to indiana 
And so she was in. She's on Crow Canyon out there. Yes. Shout out, so, Sharps. Um, <laughs> yes. So uh, me and her, you can actually see us on the live stream after the 200 free because we were both right next to each other in that lane. And so um, you can see us both on the live stream crawling out of the pool. (laughs) (laughs) And like two officials are like laughing at us because we're both just like the two dead last people crawling out of the pool, like on all fours, just dead. And so she was just looking at me like, oh my gosh, that race is so hard. (laughs) So yeah, that that was it was a good it was that was a good time so that's so yeah. awesome yes it's just a, across the board in those events and then uh, you're i mean like every other event you've been swimming this year i don't think there's an event you swam this year that you haven't gone to best time which is just amazing um and then you've continued to get better so that's like the first half of your short course season and then you went on to win um texas uh high school state championship as well right in multiple yes. events Yes, the 100 free and the 2 free I won. <laughs> yep. So, j- go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I went a 49-28 in my 100 free and got the U.S. Open Cup by .01, thank God. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes, <laughs> just by Let's barely, go. but I was so happy about it. I didn't even know till I want to say, like, 15 minutes afterwards, and I was like, oh, yes, like, okay. <laughs> so, there was that. <laughs> Um, I was happy about that. And then yes, in the 200 free, I, I have dropped, I think like 0.3 it wasn't a huge drop, but I still dropped a little bit. So I was happy about that too. I went a 147, yeah. 24, I think. Yeah. That's so. awesome. And knocking on 146. It's crazy. Cause each, I mean, like that's less than two months after junior nationals. Like, so you're talking about seven, six or seven weeks, six weeks, seven weeks after junior nationals. And you had just ripped out those best times and you get through like another half of a training cycle and then just drop a little bit more, get your U S open cut and win state. Like, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And, you know, obviously enjoy these times when they're, um, when they're happening, but it's so much more than just the times. Like, so the amount of work you put in and, um, I mentioned this earlier, but just starting swim strong this past year in the fall, um, it's been, really fun to get to see your journey and be a part of it and um um just witness like you doing these incredible things um can you talk a little bit about your experience with swim strong and how you feel like that has um helped you this season whether it be physically mentally or whatever nutrition whatever like kind of the big things that you would say have stood out that you've noticed this has made a major difference i know you alluded to the hip mobility too and the rapid fire questions but um, and I don't mean for this to be like, uh, uh, say nice things about so just genuine, oh, like no. what, um, what, what do you feel like has made the biggest impact just so people watching can know, like, what has, what have you really taken advantage of that's helped you to get to that next level? Yes. Um, I, so like you said, I just started some strong dry land, I think September, October, maybe after that, like you said, I've had a great season. I kind of just like started taking off after I started that too, which I don't know if that was from my training or, well, yes, obviously Swim Strong Dryland really did help so much, but it was definitely like a combination of training and Swim Strong Dryland too. A lot of the things that I do like about Swim Strong is how it just focuses on everything. Like it's not just focusing on like certain like upper body like parts or or just like certain lower body or um, just your core like it focus on it focuses on everything in a week and um, there's lots of different exercises that I've never like seen before I guess I don't know how to word that but like I've never really like seen any kind of exercises like that so like I said like the hip mode hip mobility like the um the 90 the 90 switchers or like the 90 90 yeah um, I forget what they're any, called. Any hip switches and yes. heel clicks and things like that. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of those exercises I really like, especially for someone who's had like a bunch of like knee and core and just like hip problems just over the years. Cause mm. surprise, I grew too fast. Um, so <laughs> there's, there's that. So I definitely really like yeah. that. And just also like leading how, into that. What? Sorry. What were you saying? No. How have you, with those specific things that you mentioned, just, um because they're pretty unique things and i think it's awesome for for people to know like hey these little disciplines where you focus on mobility where you focus on um what we call prehab to help 
with injury prevention um, to help with stability in the knee joint um, or in, all the shoulder, whatever it is. Um, you take those things really seriously and it's obviously made an impact. Um, but also, um, how have you noticed that in the pool? Like, have you noticed a difference in underwaters? Have you noticed a difference in like power? Cause you're able to move better. What are like the things that you're like, I, I noticed that I'm like stronger and more powerful, more mobile. What are the like main things that you're like, Whoa. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely underwaters. I would say my underwaters have gotten so much better this year. Um, I mean, yes, if you, if you've like seen me for the people who've like seen me swim, they're not they're still not the best. But also, I've had <laughs> I've always I've always had terrible underwaters, and I mean, this year I'm actually doing them. So I'd say that's probably. <laughs> a pretty big improvement on my end and they're not like sucky underwaters either. They're like actual underwaters. So yeah, <laughs> those have gotten a lot better. Also That's my, awesome. uh, my reaction time on my starts and uh, having faster flip turns have also gotten a lot better too. Um, That's cool. I'll, I think a lot of it is how much um, power stuff that we do is so strong dryland too. Um, a lot of, I don't know the exact exercises, but just a lot of the stuff that we do with like legs and like jumping and like getting just like those mm -hmm. fast reaction times, like while you're working out, I think those have definitely yeah. helped with a lot of like my starts and just, um, also just like a lot of the lower body stuff. Cause I've always kind of had skinny chicken legs. So, um, I haven't always had the best, like push off, push, push off the walls. Um, uh, I don't know how to word that, but I've never really had good walls or really good flip turns either because of that um so those have definitely improved just because of all the lower body stuff that we do um yeah and i haven't gotten any yeah you're knee. sore what sorry go ahead go ahead no go ahead oh. i haven't gotten any knee injuries because i've been doing the prehab and just rehab and stuff like that too so yeah that's awesome that's but, so uh, awesome all those things make such a big difference because if you're staying healthy obviously you can make big improvements if you're not healthy like you um, and you know, every, so there's no like magic dust, right? Like, um, you know, things can still happen, but the goal is to be as resilient and, uh, injury free as possible. Um, and if you take the time to do this stability work, the prehab work, the mobility work, you're going to be really successful. And so, um, I really wanted you to highlight that specifically because I think those are the things people skip over a lot of times they go to like, God, I, you know, obviously you're going to get stronger if you have good programming, um, and which is important. I'm not glossing over that, but typically the things that are easiest to do are the things that are easiest not to do. And you've had discipline in those areas. And so, um, I think something that's really struck me about you is that the progress that I see and the things that you're doing are inspiring, but it starts with your mindset and, um, your discipline to do those things consistently is not normal. Um, and so I'm wondering, like, can you talk a little about the development of your mindset, um, whether it be just like with your training um, development, your mindset, like when it comes to like big meets, because you had also mentioned you had kind of been stuck for a couple of years uh, at 23 low, and then you had a breakthrough year this year. So like, What's been different about your mindset? Um, what things have you been working on or what changes have you, what's that little, like take us on a little bit of a mindset journey in your career yes. the last few years. Yes, of course. Um, I have also been told multiple times by my parents and other people that I'm not normal either. So <laughs> you're not the only one. Um, so, in a great way. <laughs> <laughs> so I will definitely say like, I've had to do a lot of just mind training along with the whole just swim training aspect too. Um, I want to say it did start around the same time with when I got that NCSA cut when I was 13 years old. Um, Cause around, around that time was also, I just people, um, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but when that cut kind of happened, not only did I realize that I was getting better, other people started to realize that and a lot of people my age started realizing that were older and so mm -hmm. um that I definitely had lots of problems with other people that wouldn't like me because mm. 
I was doing better in the sport. And so, um, and I had, I had, of course, I'm like 13. I have no idea that people do this. And so, um, <laughs> I, it was, it was definitely a big shocker to me at first. Cause it kind of just like hit me all of a sudden. And so, um, I definitely had some problems with that because I wanted to kind of be friends with anyone because I didn't want anyone to hate me. And mm-hmm. so, um, that was a little confusing and that definitely kind of set me back a little bit, not in mm-hmm. my, tr- not in my like physical training. It didn't really set me back, but, um, just like mentally it did. Cause I just, I mean, it made me, it made me sad. I was just like, okay, well these people hate me and I have no idea why. Cause I didn't know why at the time I was like, this is weird. Like, why do they not like me? I haven't done anything to them. So yeah. that definitely like, like around that time was just like, not, not the f- best. And so, um, I definitely had to like build from that and just kind of, um, mentally train myself and say like, okay, there's going to be people that aren't going to like you. There's going to be people that are going to hate you because of these things. And you're just going to have to let it go. So I had to mentally train myself from that point on and uh, I knew that I just had to tell myself that I knew there wasn't going to be people that liked me or that hated me for just going faster or getting better in the sport and that's all that's honestly with anything too if you're mm. if you're improving on just certain things in your life and that goes for anything like school like just how happy you are um which is kind of sad because if you're being happy people should be happy for you too right but, um, <laughs> yeah so yeah. i mean just like different things like that people are gonna be like people are gonna be jealous or people are just not gonna like it because of that and it's just it just brings a lot of negativity and so um i'll definitely say when that kind of happened to me it was just it was a setback but I kind of pushed forward and like I said, trained my mind to just be like, okay, you just got to let it go. Just keep being kind to people and just move on. Yeah, I think something that you were just talking about is really enlightening for insightful for people to know that for whatever reason, people have a hard time celebrating somebody else's success. And, and I don't know if it's just because it makes them feel insecure um, or jealous or whatever, like, oh, I'm not doing that. So you can't do it. Cause it makes me feel bad about myself. But there is some like part of the human nature that there's this ego, um, that people like, it's all about me. It's all about me. And so if you're doing, if KK is doing great, like I gotta, I gotta pull her down. So I don't feel as bad about myself. And it's like, wait a minute. Like that's, it that doesn't have to be like that at all. We can just <laughs> celebrate each other's successes and experience the joy together. And I think to something that is striking about you too. I love your humility and your mindset. And you're talking about all these other people too, in your life who have your parents who have instilled values in you and your coaches who have made a big impact and, um, this program and all these, um, swim strong, your, uh, Liberty, when you're talking about racing next to her, like you've made all these mentions of other people and other things. Um, and I just think that's pretty unique too, because you see that, Hey, it's not just, it's not just about me. Like there's, I can't do this by myself. And so, but, knowing that you can't do it by yourself. You also need really strong people in your corner who actually have your back um, so that they can push you forward. I need the same thing for myself um, to be the best I can be for all the athletes and coaches and parents that we serve. I can't do this by myself. And so in the same way that hopefully I hope to inspire you, you inspire me in the exact same way um, or different ways, I should say, but it's reciprocal. Um, And Anyway, that's just something that's really tough for people to grasp. So just know anybody watching this, that when you do rise up and do things that are abnormal and you're experiencing success, I can guarantee a hundred percent guarantee mark it down. Somebody is going to hate you. Somebody (laughs) probably multiple people, maybe a lot (laughs) of people. people. Um, and that's just the sad reality of life. But at the same time, it can make us stronger if we begin to train our mind. But when you're a kid, it's especially like 13 years old, you're like, what is going on? Uh, I've never experienced what do these this before. Want from me? <laughs> it's just, exactly. it's, it's crazy. Um, and so, but if you can train your mind and find a way to use that as fuel and just be like, hey, 
I must be doing something right. If, if people are not liking me, I'm, I must be doing something right. Um, and you're kind of living rent free in their head, really. If they're thinking about <laughs> you, you're not thinking about them at all. Um, so, um, anyway, I just, I just think that's a, just a side note I wanted to, um, mention because everybody's going to experience that if you want to be successful at anything. Um, so what was your transition though, from going through that time where you felt like maybe you plateaued mentally, which kept you from moving forward physically? Um, what was di- what's been different this year? Um, because you told me offline that like in past national meets, you really struggled. You were always unhappy with your results for the last couple of years at the big meets. And then you just destroyed it at junior nationals this year and then did the same thing at Texas high school state. And so clearly you're a different version of yourself. You've been continually evolving, but what did you do to get out of that rut and to make that jump? I honestly, I think, I think a good or not good. I think a big part of it was just getting the experience too of those national meets, because when you're going there for the first time, it's kind of just like, there's people, especially, especially growing up with not a whole lot of people to chase after too. Um, Mm -hmm. you get there and it's just like, there's people here that would run me over and see me alive (laughs) in the pool. Like it's just, it's, it's a pretty big awakening, um, for someone who, who's like so young and they're just getting there. And it's just like, almost like a, just like an awakening, um, and so I think getting the experience of like my first winter juniors where I, <laughs> my coach still makes fun of me to this day for it. Um, and we just <laughs> laugh about it. And so um, definitely from like that first winter juniors and then NCSA that spring to, um, or that next spring at NCSA, which I will just say right now, <laughs> everyone's going to have bad races but my two fly at that meet was the absolute worst, worst race I have ever swam in my life. I mean, compared to the like 10 year old KK drowning in the pool, that race was the worst. Added, I think, 10 seconds and had a 14 second split difference. So, I just hey, that think, sounds like it hurt. <laughs> people, you're just going to have tough races. And you just got to move mm-hmm. past it too. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to leave that there. But um, That's awesome. yes, going there and then going to NCSA that spring and then going to summer juniors that summer, I had gotten a little better. Didn't final just yet. I did drop a ton of places, but I didn't final yet. And I had actually dropped in two of my events, two, two out of the four that I swam. Um, mm-hmm. So that one definitely was a little better. And I think that helped prepare me for the next winter juniors. Um, Mm -hmm. cause it was just like, okay, like I actually dropped at this meet compared to last time where I, um, added two seconds. But what did you do? So, so you did that, but like, what, um, is there anything you can attribute that to? Was it specifically like just mental prep or experience or like you were viewing the situation different? Like the way, cause there's pressure at every big meet, but when you were at summer juniors and you dropped a couple of times, you're like, oh, maybe I. Maybe I can do good at national meets. Yes. Uh, what What did you do to allow yourself to drop there? What was that? Because it sounds like that was the first time where you're like, oh, something something good yes. happened. Maybe not everything the way you wanted, but something good happened. And yes. So what was that baby step like? Um, it would definitely it it started there, and then also with the uh, going into this winter juniors, like you said, it was I definitely had a different mindset going into it. I kind of had the mindset instead of the first time saying like, oh, there's no way I'm going to final. I I was just kind of more like, I want to final. Like, this is something that I want that I've been working for for a long time. Mm. And so this, like, this is my goal and I'm going to get this goal at this meet. And so mm. it was definitely, I knew I had pressure on me, but it was also like, I knew that I had to forget about that pressure and I had to just go in there and just, swim honestly i just Mm. had to go and i just had to swim and honestly like the very first race that i had which was the 50 i feel like that played a big part into it too was like it was such it was such a good prelim race i didn't like drop like a crazy ton but i mean i'd been under 23 that i wanted to get for so long and so i mean Mm -hmm. 
in final two. So, I mean, that was, that was also a big part was that it just like, it immediately kicked off to just a great meet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely think that helps too, but also, yes, a lot of like, just a lot of like mental preparation too. Uh, and just like kind of changing my mentality that instead of, oh, there's no way I'm going to final or, um, there's too many fast people at this meet, mm-hmm. um, or just kind of like the degrading mindset like that just telling yourself that you can't and change it to yeah. I will do this like this is something mm. I'm going to do at this meet hmm. that's awesome that's such a good perspective um shift because I do think a lot of people struggle with that especially when you're young and you go to national meets or not even if you're young if it's just your first one and you're like oh my gosh everybody is faster than me or yeah. as fast or faster and usually if it's your first time everybody's faster than you because you just made it right and Um, but now you're one of those people that someone might walk on the deck and be like, uh, I don't belong here. (laughs) And like, but that's never the case, right? If you're at the meet, you belong there, but being going from a, like, just trying to like not mess up and try to like, uh, hang with the people that are there versus like, I'm coming for something that I want. And I know I've worked my butt off for this and, and this is my time and doesn't, whatever happens happens, but like, that's a that's a totally different shift. And that's, that's something that I think is very impressive and just takes a lot of discipline. Anybody can do that. And like, so, so if you guys are watching and you're like, ah, oh man, I, I do struggle at big meets too. Like I struggle at big meets. Like there is certainly hope you can train your mind just like you can train your body. It's not like, Oh, I'm just not clutch. Um, or whatever. Like, no, like you can, you can decide that. Um, dealing with pressure and your perspective around pressure in the situation. And um, it's, it, it's something that you can train. And I also love that you shared the story about your two fly. Cause I actually didn't even know that story. That's so funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes people like they have a bad race and they're like, Oh my gosh, I can't swim anymore. And then they just give up. I'm like, what are you, you so like knowing that you had a 14 second split difference and you added 10 <laughs> seconds at a national meet, like, that's in- inspiring. Honestly, it's like you can do that and then go and just go be in an A national final at junior nationals like a year later. Like it's just um, to me or a couple years later, whatever it was from when you had that meet. Um, it's just crazy um, how much stock we put into like this one race or this one meet. And it's like, no, big picture perspective, yeah. like just let the journey play out and keep trying to get better little by little. And I think that's something that you've done um, brilliantly, honestly. Um, so it's been, it's been really fun to watch. I appreciate all your time on here too. Um, and for just sharing insights from your career and your mindset and your journey, it's been, uh, it's been awesome to get to be a part of. Thanks for being a part of the swim strong family. I absolutely love getting to, uh, coach you in a small way and, and, um, and witness everything, but, um, thanks for taking the time tonight, KK and uh keep getting after it we're gonna keep doing some amazing things yes thank you for having me (laughs) absolutely if you enjoyed this episode subscribe to our youtube channel to catch a new episode each monday you can also check us out on social media at swim strong dryland if you would like to join the swim strong family visit our website at swimstrongdryland.com